Hey there Hunters, welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Today we have our final set of builds for Remnant 2 that I've been using since the latest update. I have been avoiding DOT builds for a long time because there's always been hugely broken parts to their builds between, you know, DOT duration scaling improperly, Sodom Malevolence generating too much mod power, and then again with more improperly scaling DOTs but now they just didn't work, and then we had Energized Netcoil not working, so it's just, it's always been something. But now I think we're finally in a good place to do DOT builds. So. We're going to be talking about two very different dot focus builds. I know I haven't done much with hugs or melee builds in this update, but that's because they didn't really change all that much since last time, so there's no reason to talk about those again. But feel free to go back and check out my previous videos on those builds. With a quick intro out of the way, let's just dive into these dot builds. Alright, so the first build that we're going to be covering is a pretty generic, just, you know, spam dots build. Nothing fancy here, because we just want to play with dots. I love dots, you love dots, everyone loves dots. So, more dots. So we're going to be using a lot of dots and just going to watch the fountain of numbers pour out of enemies. Of course, with any dot build, we're going to be using the Ritualist as our prime archetype. The prime perk Vial will let us get extra dot damage and lets the dot spread so we can clear zones much easier. You do have a choice of skills for the Ritualist. Both Miasma and Deathwish are great skills and do pretty comparable damage in the long run. But personally, I like Miasma because it can easily clear entire rooms of enemies, it has excellent uptime, and it allows us to get all the dots just outright. So this allows us to run the Ahane Crystal with basically no reliance on anything else, so it's just like, it's a good foundation for any dot build. But you can make an argument for either skill to be honest. Now for the next archetype, you do have a small choice here as well. You can opt for Challenger, which gives you 35% all damage as long as you're within range, and 10% crit, but we don't really use the crit. But the skills aren't going to be of any use to you for the most part. At best, Juggernaut can be situationally useful with stagger resistance, or you can go with what I went with, which is Explorer. I know, I know, Explorer. But Explorer will let you set up 30% all damage pretty constantly, and you do have the new Gold Digger skills that are faster now with the last update, and these can provide you with 10% all damage in haste. It does cast pretty quick now, so making it not too bad to use in the middle of a boss fight. And these last 45 seconds, plus 20 more seconds after you leave the aura, so you can have these up for a very large amount of time. And because I always want swiftness anyways, this is also saving me 10 trait points which would otherwise go to you know, something unused like Challenger Strongback. The only really downside to running Explorer in this situation is that you do have to maintain your Scavenger stacks, which I mean isn't hard, you just have to pop a Relic, but you do have to do that in the middle of the boss fight just to make sure they don't fall off if your boss fights are taking a while. And of course you have RNG on the fountains. So in the middle of a boss fight I could see how it'd be kind of tedious, but that's really the only downsides to running Explorer. I personally just haven't used Explorer in any serious builds before, so I'm kind of excited to finally get around to it and showcase it. Now, in case you were wondering, why not Archon? Well, two reasons. First is that mod damage doesn't increase the damage of dots applied by mods, except for a few. I had to go back and edit this. Apparently, Starshot and the MO mods do scale with mod damage for some reason, but nothing else does. So because we're focusing on dots and dot damage, Archon is actually providing us with Pretty much zero damage for our setup. And because we also aren't really going to be spamming mods, we don't really need the mod generation that Archon has. So really the only thing we get out of it is Chaos Gate, which is a good, you know, skill, it's a lot of damage, but you know, we'd get about equal damage from, you know, either Ritualist or Explorer anyway with full uptime. So yeah, no Archon because we're not doing any sort of mod spam here. Alright, moving on, as you can see for the weapons, we're going to be using the Sparkfire Shotgun, as it is the only long gun that does apply a dot with the primary shot. But more than that, it applies fire, which automatically activates our singed ring for free, basically. And this small little fire dot that is provided will generate us with a little bit of extra mod power to make up for the lack of mod generating items. We're going to be using the Hotshot mod as well because it's the largest of all the dots applied by ammo mods. And we do want ammo mods because they will help us reload our weapon, which is otherwise really slow, and give us a little bit more range damage because we're going to need something to fill in our time. You can use Corrosive Rounds if you want, it's not that big of a difference, or even Creeping Mist, they'll end up about the same total damage. I just like Hotshot because it does let me have a stronger gun, even just like a standard fire without having to rely on crits, though for normal clear it's a little bit better. The handgun we're using is Nebula, because now this weapon provides us with two dots, both from the standard fire as well as the mod. You can also use the Hellfire, which got changed in the last little like hotfix, to be all fire damage. So the fire primary shot applies a dot, and the explosive shot, which is now fire, applies a burn as well. 
This is kind of bugged at the moment, so the impact of the explosive shot is doing about the third of the damage it's supposed to, so when that gets fixed, it'll be a great option. Because the fire dots in general are stronger than Nebula's corrosive dots, but in a reverse situation, Nebula's mod is actually doing significantly more damage with its corrosive dot, so right now it is technically stronger. Now, I'd be using Nebula regardless, just because Nano Swarm and Energized Neck Boil make for some amazing zone clear, and Nano Swarm itself is really solid on its damage. But once the dots get fixed, I'm probably going to swap over to Hellfire for better bossing DPS, as I'm sure I'll be able to manage zone clear just fine without Nebula. For the Mutators, we're going to be running Maelstrom on Nebula to give our dots a little bit more damage. Not too much, but since we are using Miasma on the Ritualist, it's easy to sustain the 4 dot stacks, giving us you know 30% more damage from our handgun dots, because Bleed doesn't count as an elemental dot. And then for our Sparkfire Shotgun, we're going to be running Fetid Rounds, just because, hey, more dots, right? Lastly, for the melee weapon. Now, of course, you're free to choose whatever you want. I like pairing Tainted Blade with Energized Net Coil, because it's absolutely amazing. And then you can either slap it on World's Edge and just pop everything in your path, because that feels pretty dang good. A single swing can hit for about 4 to 5k with no buffs or anything active, so it clears just about anything bar an elite in a single stroke, so that's my recommendation. You can also still run the Krill Axe, which does have really good pops, but it's obviously going to hit only one target, but this would be a better choice for bossing because you do get your overload. Granted, you don't need it because you're going to have overload provided by Miasma, but it's another little burst, right? For the trinkets, we're going to be running Energized Neck Coil here, as I've talked about it already. It's an extremely powerful neck, even with the 5 second internal cooldown on enemies. You can still smash every trash ad instantly with detonations, and it does great bursts of damage. It's like 1 to 2k a pop every 5 seconds. So on top of the 25% status damage that it already gives, it's also going to give you an extra you know, 2 to 400 DPS just on the pops alone. And that's pretty dang good. You can of course run the Sinister Totem if you'd like, 50% status damage is quite a lot but it's still going to be slightly less damage per second than the neck coil, and it will also make trash clear slightly worse. For the rings, we're going to be running the Ahane Crystal and the Singed Ring. They provide us with a total 30% multiplicative damage, and it's going to be really easy to sustain with just my asthma alone. And then we're going to have Burden of the Destroyer for 15% all damage, since we will be doing a little bit of shooting and some mod damage. And Timekeeper's Jewels, we get bigger pops out of our Energized Neck Coil, and a little bit easier to sustain our dots. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using the Red Ring of Death, it's because it can sometimes hijack and refresh smaller dots like that from Sparkfire and duplicate that instead of duplicating like Nebulous Xanite Swarm. So it is kind of hit and miss on how useful it is. And overall, I lose about 100 DPS with it just because it's also reducing all of our other dots damage by about 10% multiplicative modifier, which ain't too good. For the Relic, there really isn't much that's going to help us with the dot build as far as like, you know, Relic use effects goes and stuff like that. So I sticked my bread and butter Tranquility Heart, but you can also use like the Enlarged Heart for increased use speed in case you need a refresh Prospector on Explorer. The Relic Fragments I'm using are Elemental Damage, because duh, dot damage, and then Mod Duration to give us slightly longer Hot Shots and Nanite Swarm Duration. It's like a 3 second boost, but hey, it's something. And then lastly, you can either run Reduced Mod Cost or Reduced Skill Cooldowns if you'd like to better sustain those. Or, you heck, you can even run Ranged Crit Chance for a little bit better ranged DPS to be honest. None of these are going to make that much of a difference one way or the other, so pick whatever you want. For your armor, it's armor. For the traits, we actually have a lot of room to work with, surprisingly. The only trait that actually directly affects us is Affliction, and we get that by default. And I always use Swiftness, and that's on by default as well. Now, I also like to use Flashcaster so that my dig and my asthmas are a bit quicker to come out, but that's pretty much it. Anything else is on you. I'm running Untouchable, Spirit and Expertise, Vigor, and Siphoner for, you know, general utility and survivability. Leech is always nice, especially on Dots. I do have Resonance only for the Dig Fountains, so it's hardly necessary. And I have Emo Reserves because Sparkfire Shotgun kind of chews through a lot of Emo. So it does come in handy there, but as always, you can easily shuffle all these around to go with a much bulkier setup than I'm usually running. You can go with Fortify, Bark Skin, and Strong Back easy. So what does this build do that's so special? Well, it can clear zones pretty flippin' fast, and I think faster than pretty much anything else. I don't think there's really a stronger combination than Nanite Swarm and Energized Net Coil for running through zones. And even if you run out, you know, one swing from a World's Edge is pretty much gonna refill it. So yeah, I mean, it's S tier in zone clear in that regards. The boss DPS also isn't too bad at all. 
I can usually hover around 4k DPS, so that does require a little bit of extra shooting and shuffling on all your dots. This is a little bit of work, but the dots do help keep your damage up pretty much all the time, even if the boss has to transition areas unless they happen to fall off, or if you have to spend time, you know, clearing ads or dodging attacks. So in the end, the kill times are great. Like, yeah, sure, you don't have enough DPS to beat some phase transitions like on One True King or even like Red Prince, but that's not the end of the world. But in general, I'd say there's not any significant downsides to this build. Sure, it's not the strongest thing around as far as boss kill times, and there will still be some crazy builds that can outboss the image you through, you know, bugs, exploits, or even just being on hugs with a weak spot. But honestly, this is almost as good as it gets. It's right up there with Mod Swapper for me. So, Vile Outcast for the dot builds gets the pass. All right, the final build I want to show with you all is more of a meme because while it technically falls under exploits and I do avoid those when I can, I don't see this being something that Gunfire Games is going to fix anytime soon. So as you can see, we got some shenanigans going on here. We got big ass dots and large amounts of damage just being thrown around here. And again, this may not be record breaking DPS, it's just usually around 5k DPS all things considered, which is great, but you can get higher than that for sure. But what's really going on here? So let me break this down for you. So the whole thing is revolving around a unique interaction with dot duration that I'd like to call dot swapping. Basically, if you have a dot that let's say does 1000 damage over 10 seconds, dots in this game typically hit twice per second. And so each tick is gonna do 50 damage. That's 100 damage per second over 10 seconds. Easy to understand, right? Well, if we have the same dot and put on Band of the Fanatic, we're going to deal more damage over less time. I know it's not directly going to be 25% more damage, but for argument's sake, let's just say it's 1250 damage now over 3.5 seconds. Well, that's going to be 178 damage ticks as we're going to be dealing our damage over a much shorter duration. Now, the important part to know here is that when you do apply a dot, that time is fixed. And if you refresh it, that dot keeps the same time and even the same damage unless you're further modifying those by player stats and whatever. So, if you were to take off Burden of the Fanatic, your dots aren't just going to magically go back up to 10 second dots. They stay as 3.5 second dots until they fall off. Once applied, the duration won't change. And this is where our exploiter bug or whatever comes in. So using that principle of dots duration being static or snapshotted, while a dot is active, we can then replace our Burden of the Fanatic ring with Timekeeper's Jewel, which would turn our 3.5 second dots to 20 second dots. However, since we don't actually change the duration of the dot while it's already applied, we have to fit the new damage total given to the dot through the extra duration into the 3.5 second window that is already applied to the dot. This effectively doubles or triples the damage we would be doing with Band of the Fanaticon, or quadrupling or five times the damage of the base dot. It's a lot of damage. The only kicker here is that now you have to sustain this still shortened dot, or if it falls off, it's going to break the cycle. But this is the principle of dot swapping, and kind of what we're going to be abusing with this build. So naturally, we want to take the biggest dot we can find and multiply that as much as possible which of course is going to lead us directly to Starshot. This bad boy can fit so much damage over time in it. So we're going to want to use the five charges of the Big Bang mod to apply our dot. And then we need to quickly swap over from Band of the Fanatic to Timekeeper's Jewel. The hard part then becomes sustaining the dot of Big Bang, which is only going to last a total of seven seconds, given you know the base duration plus affliction. It's actually not too much time because you have to generate the mod power and shoot and land the hit before the dot falls off. So really, you got about like five seconds. Now, luckily, I also found out we do have a silver lining here and that because the game registers any Big Bang shot as the same dot, because it's coming from the same source, we can then use the level one shot to refresh the duration of the initial dot, which saves us so much trouble. So we really only need to generate one charge of Big Bang between each use. It's still not the easiest thing to sustain every few seconds. So we're going to be using the Archon as our primary archetype because we do want to get that extra mod power generation from our shots and dots, as we do have very little time to actually recover our mod and shoot it again. Now, I said this before, and I know I keep going back and forth on this, but because it seems so inconsistent and it changes damn near every patch it feels like, but even though mod damage does not scale dots from mods, there are a few exceptions where it does for reasons unknown to me. And I swear again, it changes all the time because I test this like every patch. 
but MO mods, as well as Starshot, seem to get stronger dots with mod damage. So Archon does help us with our damage here for Starshot. For the secondary archetype, we can really use whatever we want. I'm going with Ritualist because I'm going to be using Affliction anyway, plus it has Death Wish, which is pretty nice despite the short duration. Challenger and Explorer are also solid options to use as they apply more damage more consistently. Up to you though. For our trinkets, we're going to be running a similar setup to most other dot builds. For the neck, we're going to want Energize Net Coil. The reason being here is that when we swap our ring out for Timekeepers, our total damage becomes insanely high on the dot. So when we do get bursts from the Net Coil, they're actually going to be really, really high, like 3 to 5k. It's nice extra DPS boost for sure. For the rings, we're going to have Red Ring of Death because this will let us duplicate our Star Shots dot, which is great for our overall DPS, but this does cause other problems. Because of this ring, we don't want to use any other dots in this build. As I mentioned earlier, this ring often overwrites the dot that it duplicated, so we're not going to be able to consistently get two Star Shot dots, and duplicating other dots is not going to be worth it. So this is why we don't run Miasma, because it would kill one of our Star Shot dots and ultimately lower our DPS. And because of that, we also aren't going to be running a Hane Crystal either, or a long gun with, you know, a bunch of dots on it as well, which does suck, but this is what we gotta work with. So our other rings are going to be the Singed Ring for our 10% multiplicative damage, and Burden of the Destroyer for 15% all damage, which will help out pretty much everything we do. And the last ring slot is going to be for Bane of the Fanatic, which we're going to swap for Timekeeper's Jewel. Now again, covering our weapons, of course we have Star Shot for Big Bang, that's as we mentioned, that's the whole point. And we're putting the Prophecy Mutator on this because it will help us generate more mod power the more we use it. And feedback isn't going to give us very much mod power back because only the first shot is going to be with 5 charges. And after that, we're going to do very little damage because we're using, you know, like a level 1 charge shot. So ultimately, it's going to be kind of wasted. Prophecy at least is just good because we're going to be spamming it. Now, our other weapon is going to be whatever you want. I have a shotgun with a familiar mod on and feedback over there. Feedback is going to generate a decent amount of mod power after using the Familiar because the base cost is pretty high, and Familiar instantly spawns so it doesn't take much time to use it and swap back to Starshot. Also, the damage from Familiar is pretty decent, and with Feedback it can almost sustain itself without any other mod generating items on, so it's just pretty good to have. You can of course run Mist, but obviously you're going to have to swap to Mist, aim, shoot it, and then sustain your Starshot still without getting the extra damage from that. Also, not all the bosses, you know, will step in mist, uh, so it's not really great uptime. For the relic, we're going to want reprocess heart to help generate mod power for us, and we're going to be using mod damage, elemental damage, and reduce mod cost fragments. Pretty standard here for the mod builds. Armor is armor, whatever you want. For the traits, we really don't need anything here unless you want to run kinship to not kill yourself, but everything else, pretty much on you. I always have swiftness and untouchable on, and spirit and expertise but you're free to do whatever. So the way this build is going to work is that you have to start every fight with Starshot and Big Bang to apply the dots. Then you need to very quickly swap Band of the Fanatic for Timekeeper's Jewel because you only have a 7 second window to apply another Big Bang. You can extend this time by using Eruption on the Ritualist or by using the Executor Mutator with melee weapons, but this does not refresh the duration of the duplicated dot from Red Ring of Death. So prioritizing Starshot's Big Bang is very much advised. While playing this build, after a few boss fights and after I got familiar with it, I ended up just making a macro to quicken my swap speeds. It's unnecessary, but you know, a PC take advantage, right? The whole build though is just a big meme, and being that I don't particularly like abusing systems like this, nor do I like menuing and item swappings mid-fight, boy do I hate that. Not softly about Dark Souls PvP or anything, but anyway, it's just a for fun build. So, if you perform the swap correctly though, and maintain the dot, this build does some dumb levels of damage. And it can pretty much obliterate every boss in the game with pretty little effort, you know, since all you have to do is really just get the initial shot off and then kind of maintain it from there. If this was possible with like intended mechanics and stuff, I'd say this would be my favorite build in the game, but as it is right now, it's just kind of for funsies. While you can run this build to, you know, clear trash and do whatever you want, uh, I would recommend just swapping over to Sparkfire Shotgun and putting on something else there so you can clear trash with just the Energized Net Coil and the dots from that. Uh, because Star Shot's not great for that. It's not the best, but it's also not the worst. But anyway, that's going to be the Dot Swapper build. Thanks everyone for listening to all my explanations and discussions about itemization here in Remnant 2. I don't really have any other builds that are unique enough to make videos on, so I'm probably going to retreat into the shadows until the next big update or DLC, or until I have a bunch of news for Beyond Hell mod. 
Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for watching and sticking around. I do really appreciate it. If anyone has questions or concerns, please let me know. But yeah, okay, bye, peace, good luck out there, hunters.